So uh, I think it's about time we get started. Uh, hope you had a nice lunch and I hope my session doesn't put you into lullaby <laughs> tones. Uh, so welcome to the session, post lunch session. Uh, so we will be discussing on an interesting topic which is unlike the normal course, correct? Which is, you know, generally when we say CA and the profession, we are always looking at A, tax. Again, now the tax is split into two of uh, the recent past with the GST coming in, correct? So we have the indirect tax domain, we have the direct tax domain, and then of course we have the traditional audit domain. But there is something which all the three domains have in common, and that is technology. Today we live in a world where everything is driven by technology, and automation is the key. Without automation, nothing is possible. It could be a simple, you know, an income tax filing, you might be using ABC software, or for all you know, even your tally, the way the accounting has been captured, all of these are automated. And in that sort of an automated world, how do I focus on compliance and how can I solve this problem of compliance with certain tools? And those tools and techniques, we are going to spend a good amount of time and that is nothing but data analytics. Okay? So we are going to look into how analytics is going to be a differentiator in the field of auditing, compliance and the controls related to that. Because we are living in an automated world. So to give a quick background about myself, I am uh, Narsimha Nilagor, practicing chart accountant, partner Kevin company. I specialize in the core domain of technology. So which means that while others, IT is, for others IT is income tax, for me IT becomes information technology. Other than those two, one or two months where you know, all of us are forced to do a lot of income tax work, correct? But generally I have done a good amount of audits, I am an information system assurance professional, I do a lot of IT consulting, uh, I do quite a bit of data analytics, I probably share a lot of practical experiences including a hands on demo, you know I will try to show you how certain tools are used, how time is saved using that. Uh, and then of course uh, I have also done a lot of this uh, implementation of SOCs, IFC, internal financial controls, audit of controls surrounding that. And the latest thing to add up into this my forte is something which is called as the GDPR, General Data Protection Regulations, and in India it is called as a privacy law. Okay, so these are a few things which I do from a technology perspective. And I have dealt with a large number of companies, corporates, you know, foreign clients where we help them to use technology as a solution. Either I do an IT audit or I try to do a process transformation, process re-engineering. You know, multiple levels on those lines have been helping our clients and I thought I'll share those experiences to you so that you will be able to use a few of those when you are coming across a similar circumstances. Okay? And of course I am a speaker at the national and international forums as well. So I represent ISATA at the international forums. Uh, last year I, was, I spoke at the ISATA Asia Pacific Conference at Dubai and this year I will be speaking in Malaysia and uh, Thailand. So before we move into the basics, first let us understand what is the world we are surrounded with. Okay? So a small clip will make us understand, let us see how today's automated world is. Let's quickly see how this is going to operate. Transmitted the appropriate data to create the claim and filed the California SR1 accident. 
Correct? The typical scenario we are all of us are facing with, which means we are driven in a world where deadlines are almost next to us every day. For all you know, you might be even in between all this, you have few more deadlines. We may have some internal audit deadline, correct? You may have some client presentation. For all you know, your marriage anniversary or birthday or you know so many things might be there, correct? In fact, we are today I think we have to come up with a policy in the month of September and in the month of March, CS do not should not get married at all. We don't hardly have time, you know, to dedicate ourselves, correct? So that is where we are, you know, the reality. Okay, this is one side of complaints. Let us see what is there happening on the audit. You know, in the initial stage of audit, all of us are extremely happy. The first year of audit, every possible observation we have put in. Second year is more like, you know, the maturity or the discovery stage, you know, realize that, oh, first year I didn't audit all this. Okay, let me try to look into this. Fantastic. Then third year I realized that, okay, two things I did not do. I did not look into these things in the last two years. Can I spend some time on this? So I'm spending most of my time in the first few years doing an audit. You know, trying to get in some observation. From the fourth or fifth year, this becomes stagnant. I know this client will have only 5 problems. Go take those 5 problems, update your work paper, take the documentation evidence and keep moving. If this is the scenario of our audit today, tomorrow systems will replace us. Why? So there is a technology which is called as a blockchain which is coming up. A blockchain says that every transaction along with an audit train you are able to justify and prove it. And it gives so much amount of reliance I am not going to too much practical aspect of it, but the people say it gives so much amount of reliance that it cannot be reversed or you, know, it cannot, you cannot identify mistakes etc. Assuming that is the error, then except for the so called signature, what is our value? And that also is getting replaced, digital signature. That means where is our value addition coming into? And that is why we need to realize after a point of time, once we reach the maturity stage, when we go to the last step, the predictive stage, you know, nobody is actually going into that phase. We are just going down and nobody is able to analyze. Let us typically take today's reality. Client typically comes on September 1st week and he says, dumps with all the files, papers, Excel, sometimes he gets the computer only, sometimes he gets the accountant only to our office, says, sir, please audit. Then we are doing our audit, we figured out there was a fraud which happened. When? April or May last year. You tell the client, he'll say, sir, all those I got to know last year only, you audit and you file the returns. And that's why clients today want to file the returns, because 5,000 penalty. Whatever happens today, the government has realized 5,000 is a very easy way to mention a penalty. Correct? Income tax delay filing, 5,000 penalty. Directors uh, didn't identification, KYC delay, again 5,000 penalty. Correct? Of course, our GST is an exception, that 200 rupees or 100 rupees per day. Correct? So many rules are there. Which means, people are looking at, looking at our profession, Merely as a problem finder, are we able to give solutions? Are we able to give insights? These are all the few challenges which we are facing. Let's look into a few other challenges. Digitization is leading to large, massive volumes of data. Let's simply take an example of you know a Flipkart or uh, an Amazon or for that matter even Ola or Uber. None of Flipkart does not have literally any inventory of its own. So is Amazon. Uber or Ola does not have even a single car of their own. It is all totally belonging to somebody else. You have this own your rooms, own your rooms, correct? So own your rooms have come up with a concept where you can book it and they are not having a single hotel license. Which means we are heading into an era where we are dealing with data rich companies. A simple example to you know substantiate Earlier we thought 8 GB phone was sufficient. Today even if you have a 64 GB phone, we don't have, we say it is not, not sufficient. And every time and again you want to go for an upgrade. Correct? With the new technology, with more storage, with more space, etc. etc. Which means we are leading in a, living in a world with massive volumes of data. Next, we are coming up with innovative data driven models. You know examples of Uber and uh, Ola which I made a mention. Uniqueness of transactions are increasing. Earlier I knew these are the four or five problems which I used to face. Today I don't know what is the type of problems. I have audited clients where you know we always looked into one particular angle and you know the next year when we try to see if we try to look at the same angle the instances are not applying or you know my use cases are not I am not able to justify. Even the client is surprised that these sort of frauds are happening. Forget that I will give you one more simple example. Amazon had launched a subscription service called as Prime. All of us are aware of that. You get, you know, early, early, what is that, uh, early
early delivery, you get video on demand, audio on demand, there's so many benefits. This Amazon Prime was launched at least in 20 to 30 odd countries before it was launched in India. In India they launched it. Three months was a trial, subscription period, everybody used it. Then few days later Amazon was eager to know how many Indians are using it because during a free period everybody started using. Typically that's an easy way to enter into Indian market. Correct? Call it as free and slowly charge, charge a premium. Anyways, so over a point of time Amazon wanted to identify how many of these are actually able to get out as a revenue. When they saw that balance, it was hardly 10 or 20 percent. Then they thought the rest of them have unsubscribed, but the reality is they were still able to use it. Amazon was shocked. Then over a point of time, a few days they were doing a lot of research and about a probably a month later, the director of, you know, one of the employees who was working in this product, he gets a message on his WhatsApp with a YouTube link. It says, 25 different ways in which you can get Amazon subscription for free. <laughs> the product manager of Amazon was shocked. He said, this is an international company, correct? It's almost valued at about a trillion dollars today, the market cap, correct? And the founder is the world's richest person and it is heavily invested in technology and forget that it has worked in 25 different countries and not been, you know, in India when they launched it, they found out. In fact, the director was surprised, he went and clicked that link and he found out 25 different ways in which you can get literally actually work. And he, would, he thought about the innovation of the Indian mentality and he said, how are these people able to come up with so many sort of, you know, uh, you know loopholes? They immediately took time to plug all of this. The catch is, had they deployed data analytics at early stages, perhaps these could have been avoided. We are living in an era where technology is just overcoming us. We live, eat and breathe technology today. You are feeling hungry, don't even bother, click a button, there is a fellow who comes and delivers to your house. Subject to time and other conditions, correct? So you are feeling you know, frustrated, you want to go to a movie, you click a button, tickets almost out, you only have to go there. They said no need to come to theatre, we will send the theatre to you, Prime subscription and you know, what is that, uh, Netflix and all these subscriptions. So everywhere there is massive usage of technology. Limitations of traditional methods of sampling and auditing. Earlier we used to pick up, typically today even if you go to a cloud, you know, premise, how do we pick up a sample? We just say, okay, randomly take some 10 or 20 and you know, just go ahead. In fact, I will show, show a slide what is the difference between, you know, an innovative way of how a, 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 you know, a traditional sampling works with the comparative data and data sampling. Time constraint and audit, the biggest challenge which we have. Typically look at the timelines which are working in, correct? So we have to, we have about 20 or 30 odd companies, we need to finish tax audit and the due date is September 30th. What we are going to do after September 30th, nobody wants. But as of now, we have so many things to accomplish. So time limitation. Heavy reliance placed on IT controls. I went to one of these banks, I was doing, you know, a concurrent audit or a statutory audit. I asked a simple question to the bank manager. Sir, how are you classifying your NPA loans and advances? Now this gentleman, all that he says is, Sir, system is taking care of it, sir. Therefore, I am not going to do anything. I said, then what are you doing as a bank manager? System only will do everything. Correct? Of course, I don't question him because I have to still receive my audit fees. But nevertheless, these things are running in my mind. But when I started looking into it, I realized a simple example, which 90% of the banks have this issue. They have something called as a working capital model in which they give the cash credit facility. We call this as drawing power. The rule of drawing power is very simple. You calculate how much is your current assets. You calculate how much is your current liabilities. Difference between these both, we call it as a networking capital. On that some percentage basis, we will give you the working capital. If you go to majority of the banks, majority of the banks, this details are either fed three months in delay, are not at all fed, or part of the data is fed. What is the part data? They fill the asset, they don't fill the liability. Which means what? My networking capital is more, I am getting more credit facility. Who did this? Human being. Can you blame the system? No. Correct? Now this is where using simple analytical tools, you will be able to figure out where, what is going wrong. Need for continuous audit is also another area which is coming up. You know, we call it a concept called concurrent audit. You know, we want a, something called as real time audit. As in when transaction happens, as in when the activity happens, we want on a realistic time basis. And last, we are now looking into prediction, not post-mortem. I don't want what happened to tell me what is going to happen. Correct? So that is what we have to look into and that is where a few challenges are coming up. So we understood the landscape. Now I think it's better we move into the solution. And 
what is the solution? Data analytics. Let's probably spend a few minutes to understand what is this data analytics all about. So most of us would have understood, you know, fixing fancy dashboards such as, you know, some images like this. I want to put that, you know, many of them presume these things are data analytics. Well, that is the visualized version of data analytics. See, everybody wants to have fancy visuals today. Whether the content is, you know, the app works properly or not, you at least want a fancy display. We use an app based upon the user interface, the way the app is interacting with us. Which means we need to understand just because I want an interactive display, that is one part of the story. But the question is, there should be some substance. And that substance is what we are going to look into. It. If I look into a typical Wikipedia definition, probably if I have to draw the reference, it's inspecting, classifying, transforming and modeling. Nothing I am able to make sense. And more importantly, the question is, as an auditor, what am I going to make sense out of it? Correct? So informing and taking conclusions and more importantly, supporting in decision making. So that's basically what an analytics is. How it is relevant in finance, I'll draw a reference a little later. I'll give a simple way of you know understanding this analytics. You get a message all of a sudden from <coughs> let us say Ola or Uber. They send you a message which says, Dear customer or dear patron, you know, it is found that you have not used our services since quite some days. We give you the so and so cashback voucher, or they directly send you a message. Get flat 30% off, get flat 20 rupees cashback, some random message. If you see the logic behind that message coming into your inbox, it would have been because you haven't used the services in the last few days. Agree? Or let's take another example. You might have probably registered your profile and some details with some website or downloading some information. And many days you did not access it, they send you an alert or they send you some sort of an email or some sort of a reminder. Now why are people doing this and more importantly, how are they able to do this? It is because they have analyzed your data. If you go to timeline.google.com, you know, Google will tell you in the last few days where you were. Based on that, the next level of marketing which Google is going to do is send you location based advertisement. Oh, you have come to uh, Vasant Nagar, there is this, uh, you know, so and so restaurant, there is this mall going on, or there is a small fiesta going on, or there, there is a small, uh, what is this, Alliance uh, Academy, right, right next door. So they have a lot of things lined up on Saturday, why don't you finish this after a heavy CP session, I think probably this could be make sense for you. Forget all of this. You book a Uber ride from location A to location B. After you reach location B, you open the Uber app, it is telling you, that do you want to go back, it is automatically chosen from location B to your phone. And it is in fact able to identify what time of the day you are doing this. I will tell you a hard reality. Many of them in the morning they pick up a whole hour Uber and they go to their ABC location. Whatever their office is. The app has got so much used to it and they started doing differential pricing for this person. One day his mobile phone was not working or for whatever reason, you know, his friend did it. This happened in the right case, which happened in the case of my, uh, you know, friend. He did it and the app gave at least 30% lesser fare compared to that person. Now, how are they able to do this differential pricing? Well, it's all about analytics. Correct? So, which means analytics are broadly bucketed under three. The first one is called as prescriptive. It is more like, you know, a doctor's prescription. It's more like, you know, how the prices can be changed, how things are altering. On the other hand, you have something called as predictive. I know based on this pattern, this person always visits this website at so and so time. I know based upon the search history, this person is going to go to so and so location on this day. And I know based upon certain parameters, this is what you are going to do. And on the other hand, you have what is called descriptive. It is more trying to give you insights of future based on past experience. So this is where as auditor, the last part, this is where as auditors we will have to head into. You know, one, I remember on a jovial note, one of the days, uh, uh, a lady went to a Swamiji and told, Swamiji, I am very scared. I feel that my husband is having some sort of an affair with his uh, uh, office colleague. So how do I figure it out? I cannot ask him this question also. At the same time, I cannot be without asking because my mind is, you know, making me restless. Immediately, Swamiji said, you know, my dear friend or my dear devotee, you need not worry. You, you know who that person is. Tell your husband that we will go for a casual lunch or a dinner to their friend's office or their friend's home. 
If you go into that home, if your husband's Wi-Fi automatically gets connected to that person's connection, that means your all your preconceptions are right. If the answer is no, then perhaps your husband is holier. So even Swamiji's are giving techno-driven solutions, which means we need to know how these trends are actually coming into picture. Correct? So we have now understood what are the types of analytics. Now why this is a necessity? What is the growing need? You know, this is a, probably a, some old statistics which I try to pick it up. Of course, you know, you find only after 2015, 2018 it would have been probably doubled or even tripled. Correct? Let's take an example of, you know, a company like Walmart. You know, in the US it's considered as a retail giant. Recently made a presence in India through Flipkart. Correct? So, of course, it has its own stores as well. So, when this company had invested, or, you know, they want to, as an auditor, you want to verify this. They literally have about 1000 to 1 lakh number of SKUs. SKUs, let's simply call it as a, you know, different types of products. When they have that much number of products at a given point in time, the question is how are you going to audit? I'll give you one simple example. One of the clients when we were trying to look into, it was an automated environment. They had a simple procedure. They used to match your PO and the GRM. The rule of, you know, audit is always match the PO, GRM, invoice number. The system used to do it. But it used to do it automatically. <coughs> Meaning, if PO had 500, GRN had you know 450, a debit note or a credit note accordingly used to get passed. Or vice versa. Let us say the system I received more and you know I got much lesser or I ordered much lesser. In all these scenarios, a debit note or a credit note used to get automatically passed. What had happened was many of the suppliers to this e-commerce vendor had a concept that if you buy 500 goods of this product, I will give you 10 units free. The system did not understand that the PO had 500 quantities, the GRN had 510 quantities. Automatically the system passed a credit note saying for 10 quantities I owe you money. And this thing that was accumulated, it came close to about 8 crores. Why? System automatically is doing and going back by my logic, system is always right, it will do everything right, well my difference the answer is so. Correct? So you need to understand that massive data is being generated at the same time it has to be analyzed and identified what are the patterns. All well said. The interesting question which I have is how is this going to solve the problem to me as an auditor? I am an auditor, I am a financial accountant. How is this analytics going to solve the problem? Yes. How what? data analytics for an auditor is the science and art probably of discovering patterns, deviations, inconsistencies. Very crucial, a simple example. You want to verify what is the rate at which interest is being calculated for a savings bank account. Perhaps you can apply your data analytics. Correct? You want to identify okay for a given population what how the you know interest rate or how the price is being fixed or fixed or cost plus markup, how it is being fixed. You can apply these. That means you can identify patterns, deviations, and more importantly, more importantly, inconsistencies. Next, extracting user, useful information, you know, through for the purpose of audit using methods of analytics, and more importantly, plan and visualize the way you want the audit to be done. The most interesting question is, why should I go for data analytics? <coughs> Financial statements audit is post mortem, no longer of use. Predictive insights are need of that. You need to tell where exactly the problem is. Data analytics helps you to see into the future and it turns <coughs> mountains of data into tiny nuggets of information. So data and information are totally different. Data is always in raw form. Information is processed. To give a simple example, a ball by ball match update of a cricket <coughs> is data. Summarized into a scorecard is information. We are more keen on knowing the information. Maybe we might know if it is a 6, but it was an on drive way, or it was a reverse sweep, or it was a helicopter shot. Correct? Those are details, but everybody is interested in summary. A simple method just to explain you know, why this is important. If you look into this chart, you know, we always have been reading everywhere that you know audit is a sample, population, etc. Assuming this was your population and you are an auditor, you have to pick up something here. What would you be doing? Random sampling, correct? At the max, probably you might say, okay, all those you know, the snowmen with probably a cap, I need to pick up, or the scarf, I need to pick up. But you will not realize 
amidst the snowmen, there is a tiny panda. And this is what analytics is going to solve. You will not realize what is there when you are looking into the larger picture. Probably smaller items you may tend to miss out. And that is where analytics comes to solve it. And in fact, analytics could probably help you also bucket all the types of snowmen with you know hands, scarves, eyes or nose. Which means, I am referring to all the transactions which have been rounded off. All the transactions which have been happened on a weekend. I have had cases where journal entries were passed on 15th of August. You know people didn't realize that okay there was any transaction. But the problem is it was actually a fraud prone entry. The entry is passed at 11 pm and 12 pm. ATM frauds always happen between 11 pm to 1 am. Why? If a skimming fraud has to happen, he will use your ATM card within 11 to 12 to withdraw maximum money. And the moment it changes to 1 or you know 12 1, the day changes. That means your limit is reset. So an ATM fraud will always happen between 12 to 1, and by the time you've already seen. No, there are so many things with the help of these trends they are able to figure out. I will give another example. Uh, because I am a member of you know a few foreign institutes such as ACCA and uh, uh, ISACA, I have to make my membership fee, uh, fee payment in credit card. And when I make these payments, I have to make it in dollars or pounds. And I would have made a transaction prior to that, let us say in rupees in India, in some ABC website. Immediately I have a swipe which happens in dollar. Within 3 to 5 minutes I get a call from my credit card company saying Sir I find something suspicious. Did you make this so and so transaction? Now how are they able to do it? It's with analytics. They are able to analyze, they have kept what is called as flags. If these sort of a behavior is observed, immediately raise a button. In fact during this demonetization period, Heavy amount of analytics was used for all you know 2014 election you know that entire election the focus was on this analytical driven model how this analytics is used and how big data was used to take a decision and that is where we were actually at. so put it other way around data analytics capabilities Correct? So we basically start off with you know information and try to optimize that and say how you are able to get foresight. Hindsight is what I already know. Insight is probably what I can infer. Foresight is what I can predict. And most of us are stuck here. Why? It could be because of want of time, want of money, you know, the client may not respect or probably we may not be able to deliver value and that is where we will have to focus on. If you look into you know a typical foundation for a data analytics, it is all driven by what is called as a P, P and a T. People, process, technology. It is not sufficient if you have technology, I might have wonderful software, the question is I should know how to use it. I more importantly, I should know when I should use it. If you go back to our good old Mahabharata, they had, you know, Lord Shiva gave a lot of weapons to Arjuna during that uh, period of, you know, the meditation, the tapas period, correct? But he told each of these weapons you will have to use in a particular point in time. And it so happened that despite having so many tools, you know, Arjuna always used to get confused and Krishna was always there to lead. But the reality today is, we will not have Krishna all the time. The reality is we have tools available with us. When do I use what? And that is why we need to know have the human element. In fact, we keep on. In fact, a few days back, I was addressing a seminar on you know artificial intelligence and you know how you know it is take, going to take over. Many of them ask a simple question: that if artificial intelligence is going to come into picture, human intelligence, what is the use of it? Or you know whether it is going to completely get replaced. My dear friends, Google Map will take you to that location, but you still have to search which floor it is. In. Correct? So the element of human intelligence will always be there and that the way you use it will determine that. Correct? And of course we need to have these processes. You need to have a process in place, you need to have an audit checklist in place, you need to have a structured method or method in place. So typically to have to summarize, it is the data which is getting converted to information which is then becoming knowledge and the knowledge is ultimately becoming what is called wisdom. 
just to give a difference between knowledge and wisdom, you know, how to distinguish it, there's a very old uh, statement, you know, knowing the fact that tomato is a fruit is knowledge, not using a fruit salad is wisdom. Correct? So that is what we are looking into. That is how we need to know which tool and where I need to use it. Now this can also result in having creative data dashboards. We call this as typically visualization. Now data visualization is the next level of data analytics. I bring in the data, I identify pattern, I try to put in this charts. It could be a simple excel chart, it could be very, you know, different types of infographics. It could be the way you want to use this information. All of those you have the possibility and that is why today data analytics softwares and tools are coming up with this flashy report where if you put into the bit, you know, those content, it is able to analyze and give you some fancy reports. I'll probably use MS Excel and try to show you a few of these. The next and the most important thing which I want to address, the myths about data analytics. It's a very, very common, you know, mindset in, in within us that it can be used only by a certain set of people. Many of the times when I have spoken about data analytics, in fact, this, this slide, why I am including is because of that. Most of my experiences when I am interacting with, uh, you know, uh, CAs or CA students or, you know, I travel across India or out, outside India as well to take sessions. So many of them, they say, sir, this entire thing you said is great, but the question is how do I use it? You require, you know, large tools, you require large software. So I thought first let me demystify those myths. It is applicable only for large company. I would say the answer is no. It is applicable even for the smallest company as long as they have data. Now you don't expect that a company to have five line items and obviously have some analytics. That is the maximum you can do is summary of all of those, which a calculator can do. But as and when the transactions are moving larger, you can definitely identify greater things. But it doesn't mean that only if you have large data, you can solve this. Second, it is applied only on humongous data, again I would say no, even on smaller pieces of data, I will probably show it to you, even with you know, one line, forget about one line, even 5000 line items, how I can use this data analytics. It requires complex tools, my dear friends, no, the basic tool which all of us day in and day out have used is MS Excel, that is a data analytics tool. There are so many functions, powerful functions in the MS Excel, probably a few of us, you already knew it, few of them probably I will try to draw reference. You need not be a data scientist. This is the latest buzzword today. I am into data analytics. I am a scientist. What does he do? Nobody knows. It is driven by maths and statistics. Many of us have taken up CA because we don't want to see that so-called mathematics which we saw in school. Mm -hmm. And the reality is today world cannot live without mathematics. Even the simplest thing you know is environment of mathematics. I am not saying go to the advanced level of sine theta, cos theta, you know so many things. You know, what is that? Uh, we had differentiation, integration. Let's not go to that level. It is basic things. Remember, when we use a tool, we need not understand the science behind the tool. We should know how to use the tool. Do we say that, oh, fan, I have to switch on. Let me first figure out how the power is going to the fan. Then let me see what is the instruments which are into the fan. After that, I will use the fan. That is no, no, one way of using it. That is a more like a scientific approach. But let us be a pragmatic person. It is impossible for me to figure out how the data is, you know, how this light or water my content is coming into this screen. I don't want to figure out. I rather want to know where all I can use this projector. I rather want to know even if a power goes will my projector work. I rather want to know even if I am not in this location, can I use a portable location for my projector? And that is what is the importance. It requires huge qualifications. No. I would say absolutely no, even a basic commerce graduate, forget that. Even a person if you see as common sense, it is sufficient. That is the most important as a prerequisite. Heavy investment, again I would say no. There are tools available as cheap as you know, 10,000 to 20,000 rupees. You know, with subscriptions, etc. You will be able to do it. And again, it's not about algorithms. So I have, now that I have tried, I have made an attempt to break the myth. Let me probably go into say, are tools available? Okay, so tools are definitely there. The first and the foremost tool is what I call it as an Excel. Majority of us underutilize this Excel power. I'll give you a simple tip. From tally to Excel, I can extract data by just using one or two functions. Automatically data will come into Excel. Nothing required. 
I am not referring to going to tally and export the data. No, that everybody knows. Using tally, I need to get the data from, uh, sorry, using Excel, I need to get the data from tally. It is possible. Simple tool. And as Excel, most of us use it. Most of us. I think I would probably say, you know, with great salary that we have to use it. Otherwise, our finance profession will not be there. Correct? Any large company I have gone, any large software they see, ultimately output will come in Excel. Because that is the mindset of a finance professional and that is that Microsoft has done so much about it. Correct? General audit software, we call it as a GAS, you know. These are tools which are used for generic purpose. You know, certain times uh, it is used for, uh, it could be an add-in to an Excel or it could be a separate third-party app. I'll show a few samples of that. Then you can probably have an application software, you know, it's a separate app itself you have it or specialized audit software, typically used in the case of banks. A few banks have used this, you know, the analytical module, especially for that money, you know, anti-money laundering measures. To curb the anti-money laundering measures, many of them, many of the banks have adopted this. So therefore, these are a few things from a tools perspective. I cannot name the tools because, you know, this is a general uh, forum. Probably offline I can give you a few samples, examples of how these tools work, etc. So now that we have got a good amount of understanding on the key functions, you know, what is data analytics, I thought it's time I show you how to use these data analytics. Correct? That is the most important. We learned the theory. The question is, how do I put it into practice? So let's probably go spend some time. First thing on MS Excel. Many of them would have already been aware of the functions which I'm which I'm using. For all you know, you might be giving me a better function. I'm more than happy. I will learn from you. But probably I will restrict my discussion to few of these. You know, sort and filter, which is the most commonly used, correct? And of course, the pivot table. I'll probably not spend time in showing the sort and filter because all of us use that. A pivot table and a classic pivot table, that's an exceptional way of, you know, how you can try to analyze data. Typically, it tries to give you the two-dimensional approach. Then you have the slicer, which is a variant of this pivot table, which is typically there in the case of Excel 2016. Look up the most popular tool which we have been using or function which we have been using throughout our uh, you know, article ship days, correct? Conditional formatting, date time, logic functions and auditing of formula. So I am quickly moving on to show some live data, okay? So if I have to probably, you know, I will try to zoom in a little, correct? So I have a simple file over here, you know, there are two or three things in this particular uh, place which just says invoice date, sales, invoice number, name and user ID. Let us presume this is the data which you got from SAP or you know any Oracle systems or for that matter any system or for all you know even time. It may not be able to give it in the same format, let's not go into that. Let's say this is the data you want and you want to start off your audit or analysis. Now using Excel you can use multiple tips and tools to do it. The first thing which we always do is apply the sort or the filter function. So you choose the data from the first text to the last text. Very important, many of them make a mistake over here is when they apply the sort or filter function, you know, especially the filter function, they just go over here and apply the filter function. Okay? You now why do I apply the filter? I go to data, there's an option called filter, I just apply it. This is an incorrect method of applying filter. The reason is, when you have a string of data and in between there are few blank lines, the filter will not go up to that level of blank lines. So it is always recommended that you come to the last by using a control end or control shift end etc. In my case I have come up to line number, you know, I don't know what, what is the number here, 6667, correct? I have seen that this is the last data and I don't have any data after that. From here to the topmost cell, I apply the sort and the filter. So this is always the best way in which you can apply the sort and filter. Now since most of us know the sort and filter, what I thought I will spend some time is to say what are the lesser known things in sort and filter or what are the uncommon things, what are the things which we don't use. There is something called as a date filter under that you can identify a variety of things. I can identify all transactions before a particular date, after, tomorrow, next week, this week, next quarter, this month, like this I can identify various things. For instance, if I choose next month, it will not appear because all my data is pertaining to 2016, so it may not appear, but if I choose probably based on the live data, I might be able to get better results. 
The next thing which probably I will try to spend some time to explain a lesser known fact is in the new number filter you have what is called as the top 10 above average min average. When you are doing a sampling you can use this simple tools. I want to do a detailed analysis of the top 10 items only. I don't want to go into the larger things. Because typically if you see this bank audit, you know that annual statutory bank audit, we have roughly about 10 days and we have been given 2 or 3 branches. And most of the time these branches are in different locations, half day goes in travel itself. Correct? So within that short span of time, how do I try to do it? You know, simple tools are just this, you can probably adopt. So the advantage of here is in this top 10, you can also figure out top 10 percentage of the items or also you can choose top 10 percent. Top 10 items or top 10 percent. The next I'll quickly move on is to what is called as a pivot. So in case of a pivot, we go to this insert menu, correct? And there's an option called pivot. And we obviously need to choose that data where it is. So I click over here and I choose from the first cell to the last cell. The moment I choose this, it asks me do you want the data in a different worksheet or a new worksheet. I just say okay. I am able to get this pivot. The most power th powerful thing in a pivot is these 4 into 4 matrices which you see. The extreme, you know, the rightmost corner, we always call it as a value factor. Correct? You know, you can see my mouse. Correct? So that is basically where you have the value. Typically you try to take the sales over here. And here, this row, what do you want to bring about? You want to bring about day, time, days, etc. You can try to bring about here. Correct? You can probably try to bring in your name. So it will give me a result something like this. Name wise it can be. But this doesn't make sense. Rather I want to identify based on user ID. I remove the name. It gives me at a user ID. Now this is where I can use a two dimensional approach. What is it that I can do? Sorry. What is it that I can do? I can choose name as well as user ID wise. When I do this, it gives me a report like this, which is easy for me to read and understand. What I do is, I right click this, I go to the pivot table options, under that there is an option called display, there is a very interesting option called classic pivot. This is an extremely powerful tool whenever you are using a pivot in a two dimensional approach, meaning you are analyzing from two angles and you try to click OK, it gives you the fields one next to the other. It gives you the fields one next to the other. And after you have this, you can do a lot of analysis, you know, various techniques and etc. So this is one such area which I thought probably I'll spend some time. The next, probably, you know, the lesser known item is, how do I do a random sampling in Excel? Is there a formula for that? Yes, we have a formula. So what I am doing over here is I am just inserting the column after column D here and I use a formula called is equal to R A N D It's called random bracket open bracket close that's it now You might be wondering what is this to do with random It is now generated once some number which I don't even know why it is Please look very carefully into this number I am just going here double clicking this and again I press the enter, the number changes. Why? That's why it's called random. Correct? So again I go click here, I double click, it changes. Which means I am generating random numbers for a particular stream of data. Now what I do is, I click and drag this so that I have all random numbers generated. I copy this and pay special the formula. The moment I have done pay special of the formula, this value remains as it is. Why? Because if I apply any method, you know, Excel based technique, this value will keep on changing. So I want it to remain constant. Now if I have to apply random sampling, all that I do is go to this field and say probably number filter, choose the top 10. Do you want top 10 in items? I say yes. So I have my random sample ready. The interesting question is sir, why did you choose the top 10? Top 10 I choose because I had to choose something. I can choose any random thing. Then what is the difference between you going line item wise and picking up the sample? 
So what I did by doing this particular function, some random values came, I don't even know how the random values came, but from that I was able to pick up the top 10 items, which means I had already chosen a random population. But now, if I have to do a stratified random population, it is not possible in Excel so easy. That's why I will talk to CATS how to use that. Clear? So these are a few things which I thought I will mention it in the case of uh, uh, CATS. We of course have one more powerful tool called Slicer. Slicer is an advanced version of, you know, it's available as a pivot variant. Let us say I want to know which are all the sales, which is, now it gives me the third dimensional approach. Here I am able to do the 2D approach. I want to go for the third dimensional approach. So in that case I go to what is called as Slicer. This is there under the Analyze tab, Insert Slicer. This is there only in Excel 2016 or I think one version prior to that it may be there but I, I use Excel 2016 so I think it's available there. So here they can choose what is it I want to slice and dice my data. I want to slice my data based upon invoice number or based upon invoice date. So I just click invoice date, come down and I say ok. Now it gives me all the invoice dates over here. Let us say I want to filter only one particular invoice date which is this. Sorry. Okay. So let us say I want to choose only all the transactions on 1st April 2016. So this is all the transactions on 1st April 2016. No, I want 1, 2 or I want 3 or I want all of them between 1, 2 and 3. I can just hold shift, I will get all the three. So, I am able to slice and dice the data the way I want it, which again a powerful tool which you can consider. Uh, any more tools? Consolidate. A very very important and interesting function. Let us take an example. I have, probably I will just go a little later. Uh, I have PNL account of financial year 16-17 and I have a P&L account of financial year 1560. Okay, or let us presume I have a P&L account of a branch A and branch B. The most important thing when we do consolidation is we want to add this up. Many a times the items are you know totally different format, different way etc. So that is where this comes as a very handy tool. What I do here is I first insert a new sheet. The moment I insert a new sheet, I go to this tab called as data under this data, there is this option called as consolidate. When I click consolidate, a small window like this appears, it says what do you want to consolidate? I tell the system, using this small key over here, I tell the system, please consolidate p and account of 16-17 or let us say branch 1. I give an OK. I say add. Please consolidate this with p and account of 1516. Again I say add. The moment I have added these both and I click OK, I will get the results in this particular sheet in terms of the added values. But in case I want to know what are the particular or the headings, column headings, I will have to choose one more icon. So I go back to consolidate. I have chosen these both in case if you can know all the preferences. Now I also say give me the top row and the left column and then I say ok within few minutes it has generated this report which is giving me all the data which is necessary and using this I can in fact link this to the previous cells as well that is also possible automatically all of these is being able to generate by using a simple tool now where can I use it? I use it whenever I have to compare two fields where I have a common text string, consolidation of you know holding subsidiary, branch accounting or for all you know if I have to do a comparison of month on month of NPA you know or you know if I have to identify the trend to see whether this customer is always having a credit balance, debit balance I try to use simple tools like this to identify. So we looked into that. Conditional formatting is another one which is a lesser used tool which probably you can consider. Uh, I use a conditional formatting always whenever I have to use this invoice column. So in case whenever I have to do an audit or if I have to identify what are the duplicates or when I am entering 
especially in the payroll master. Whenever I do an audit of masters, I have written a particular column where employee number will be there. It will always highlight to me and tell if I am entering the same data twice. So that's a simple check which is possible. So that could be a condi uh, uh, conditional, uh, sorry, conditional formatting which you will find it in the home menu, conditional formatting. You can choose highlight cells with what you want, whatever you want. So now that most of us already know Excel, so I think we'll have to move a little further to see how the functions are possible in Tally. So in Tally, we have a very powerful tool which is called as RSF, Relative Size Factor. Now what a Relative Size Factor does is, it does a typical comparison between the first highest amount and the second highest amount. Majority of the times, this you will have to, you know, if Tally had not had this feature, you may have to manually do it, which is time consuming. So let's quickly look into how we can use it in Tally. So I have some test data over here and most of us would not have used this tool called, or you know, this function, rather function called as audit and compliance. This function is a very powerful function typically for auditors. It saves a good amount of time. In case you don't have this function available in your tally, all that you need to do is, you need to set a password to your tally file, this function would appear, because this works on that particular function. Okay? So let's quickly go to audit and compliance. The moment I click audit and compliance, I have four interesting options, audit documents, audit analysis, audit journals. Now this documentation is where your entire work paper audit program you can maintain. So this is a simple tool which comes, you know, simple functions which comes along with the basic tool of time, correct? So here you can look into what are the, you know, various auditing programs. If you want, you can enter the audit report, you know, we have audited the balance sheet of so-and-so company. Everything automatically keeps on coming in. You can have your annexes to cargo, accounting standards, standards on auditing, work paper level, you know, various things like that is possible. Let me move to a more powerful function which is called as audit and analysis. In this audit and analysis, the biggest function is this. I can mention what is the level up to which I have verified the documentation or the chart of accounts. I can apply analytical procedures. For instance, I want to verify the interest total with the sales total or commission total with the sales. I can click on analytical procedures. I can compare the following. Group versus group, ledger versus group, individual person versus group, cost center versus group, etc. All these comparisons are possible and you need not sit and write formulas, you know, to memorize this. This is all automatically been given. On the other end, if I have to use certain things such as, you know, repeated transactions. This is again very easy to use tool. Whenever you are, you know, doing an audit, we have very limited time because we have given a work to our articles, correct? So when we are relying upon their work, what you can do is you can use such a certain function such as this. So I said repeated transactions. It will tell me each transaction, how many times it is repeated. For example, Kavita's rent is 1 lakh rupees. It is appearing as 18 times. Ideally, it should appear 12 times or less than 12 times, maybe part of the year. But anything which is more than 12 is something which we have to investigate. So simple tips like this. You know, this is where tools, uh, you know, can help you out. But you should know which function where you will have to use it. Another powerful area is the relative size factor. As I told you, this compares the first highest and the second highest. So if I see over here, I find something of 17 and one more of 13. Let me probably go to this electricity charges with the RSF of 30. If I go there, I see on an average my bill amount as 5000, 5000, 5000, 4000, but suddenly I see something called as 75,000. How can my electricity bill be so high when my average is 5000? So I click here, you know, control enter, I will be able to go to the journal. I see electricity charges to camera right, but if you see the narration, it says purchase of, purchase of a generator. Even the narration has a spelling mistake, at the same time the entry also has a spelling mistake. You know? Technically it is incorrect. Correct? So which means I need, I can identify quick things by you know looking into these sort of functions. And that is where we can probably spend time on. Another area could also be, you know, there is an option called other analysis. Other analysis. If I click on this other analysis, I can also identify interbank transactions. Many a times, some uh, you know, interbank may not ask us contract, 
it may be passed to two times, bank balances will not get reconciled because I pass looking at that statement and I pass by looking at another statement, then I didn't realize that I have already passed the dual effect. Transaction on holidays, provided the holiday details have been configured. So you can mention that you know all these transactions have happened on holidays. You just have to configure it in your system. Next, highest and lowest value transaction. If I have to typically identify the range, you know, this particular amount, highest is this. Lowest is this. So I can use all of these, which is a very very easy tool. The next thing comes: how can I get the tally data into Excel sheet? So for that, I use a very simple uh, method. I go to my Excel sheet. There is this option called Data. Correct. Right? So the, under this data, I have an option called Get Data. This is Excel 2016, maybe the 2013 or the prior version may have slight variations but it is still in the same menu. I find an option called from other sources and under that there is something called Microsoft Query. The moment I click Microsoft Query, a small window such as this appears. Under that you find what is called Tally ODBC. You know, Tally uses the concept of open database system, so ODBC sort of a structure. So when I click on tally ODBC and I click OK, it is now connecting to the tally file which is kept open. Okay, so I have kept a tally file already open for your information over here and it is trying to connect to this particular file. Now what I do is, there are multiple columns which are maintained in the tally database. Just for information, how database is, how the data is stored in today's world is, most of the companies use what is called as a RDBMS, Relational Database System, which means they store the data in rows and columns. So there is a particular table called as ledger. If I come down, I can find the ledger. Under this ledger, I have so many different types of attributes or rather so many types of columns which are there. But what is most important for me is the name of the ledger. So I type dollar and n, I get the name, I just push it to the right. Similarly, I want to know the closing balance, so I type, sorry, uh, because I want to know the ultimately the balance and what is the balance. So I type dollar p, I don't get it, I keep on typing until I get that dollar p. Sometimes it takes a minute or two because there are so many line items. So I got the dollar palette, I click this here. So dollar name is nothing but the name of the, in that so called you know uh, the database, this is the name of the particular column. And then of course I write dollar underscore closing balance. Now how do I know this? These are the tables which is fed into the uh, tally system. So with using some research I was able to identify or this is otherwise available also in open forum when you, you know you browse through the tally blocks. So I understood that if I have to do any audit, basic thing which I require is what is the ledger, what is the parent of the ledger, what is the closing balance. To give a difference, ledger is nothing but the basic thing and the parent of the ledger is the group. You know, you might have a liability, current liability, etc. Correct? So I quickly click on next. From this I move on to say, you know, I just click, keep on clicking next, I don't bother about the remainder functions. I can also save this query if I want to, so that next time I need not run it. And I just say finish, automatically. I am able to extract all this data into Excel. And the beauty comes here. Let us say I have this advertisement expense, sorry, I have some ad view consultants. You know, the balance is zero. Let us say I go to tally, I pass an entry, debit ad view consultant. Correct? The balance was zero. I hope you recollect. Let us say I pass 5 lakh rupees, credit cash. Okay, let us presume a hypothetical entry. I have just passed it. Now come back to this Excel sheet. Right click. Please look at this particular column. What is the value which I have? It is 0. So I right click this. Refresh this. The value is not made. Now wherever you have clients who have a consistent set of ledger accounts they are using, Please try to use these tools and from this tool you can link to your financial statement. Because many a times when you go for audit, there are multiple versions of tally backup which you get. Tally backup at the beginning of the audit, at the between the audit, at the end of the audit, after the audit. And next year opening balance tally backup will be one more thing. 
Correct? So we have so much of variance, you know, you can use simple tips such as this. If you want to do an open end balance comparison, within two minutes you can finish the comparison. Save the query, extract the report, and use the compare function which I told you, the tally opening balance comparison is over. Forget that, we have GSTR 2B comparison, 2A I think, right? GSTR 2A, where you need to match party wise, invoice wise. You can do a comparison with them for the compare feed step. Correct? So those are a few functions when it comes to uh, tally. And uh, next I move on to another tool, which is a tool which I personally use it, okay, which is called as a CAT, okay. So I, try, I can probably try to demonstrate a few of these tips just to understand, we need to understand what is the function, how to use that particular function. I am focusing on teaching you what are the various weapons. The way you use the weapons, which type of weapon you use, you know, it's totally left out. Something called as Stratify. Okay, so probably I'll just go on to a separate slide which I have mentioned over here. So Stratify typically what it does is it helps you to divide the population into stratum or groups. Let us say for example, I have, I just close this because it's not necessary for me. Let us say I'll go back to the original sales file which I had. Now in this sales file, in this sales file which, I, which you see here, I want to identify or I want to know, I want to create some sort of a group within this particular sales file. Now how do I create the group? Because I want to know what is the type of this population. So I use a function which is called as a ECAT where I try to say, try to give me, I go to the option called data, stratify the data based on numeric fields. Now when I choose stratify the data based on numeric fields, what it does is, it tells me which of the data streams are numeric I say I want to stratify the concept called sales and divide sales into buckets. It has already analyzed and told me what is the minimum value of sales which I have, what is the maximum value of sales which I have. It has also given me what is called as an incremental value. Let us say I, I, you know, I don't want this, I need to fill this amount, I can fill it. And I say please create class intervals. The moment I say create class intervals, it is able to create what is called as a lower limit and upper limit quickly and from that when I say ok, it is able to analyze this and give me a result. Let us see how that result looks like. It has told me that between 500 to 24,999, I have 4,604 line items which are sold and the value of that is close to about 3 crores. Now if you have this as an auditor, don't you think it is easier for you to do the sampling and analysis than Celsius? Now let us say you want to pick up one of these items, double click this item or you know double click the sales, it will be able to give you the details and this facility is called drill down. Any analytic driven software will always have a concept called drill down which is nothing but similar to slicer and the dicer. I can double click it, I can get much more details about it. It is like, you know, sometimes in newspaper you will find only 4 or 5 lines about a particular topic. And there is a detailed coverage in page number 2535 etc. So that's probably how you can do it. Now the same thing if I have to extend it to do a sampling, I can always go here, try to do a sampling. I choose sampling, let us say by way of, you know, stratify, you know, numeric stratify sampling, I want to do it. I have the fields which I want to stratify is sales, again the same thing I am selecting, incremental value I am choosing 25,000 again, the same thing which I did earlier and I have an option called autofill, the moment I click autofill, it automatically fills up and I say ok. The same stratum or you know the strata comes up and now I have this option where I can choose what is the type of sample I want to create or what is the sampling size. So there is an option called sampling. I click on this. I can mention what is my sample size. I can say here highest number of population is there. I probably want to say 25. Here maybe I just want to do 5 or 10. Here I may choose 5 and the rest I may just choose 1, 1, 1, 1 and 1. 
the moment I say this and I just say extract, it will pick up the data and it will give me and this if you give it to your article, he can go and verify and do all possible audits. Correct? So that's basically where all these analytical tools comes into a huge scene. And probably in the end I will also make a mention how I used a few of these analytical tools where I was able to render some amount of savings to the client and also a different type of an audit experience. Uh, probably uh, another field could be summarize. I want to identify what the summary function is. I can use that. For want of time I am just restricting it to a few functions. Uh, classification. I can classify the sales based on categories. How many of them are done by A, how many of them is done by AR, how many of them are done by AS. Column statistics. This is a very powerful tool. The moment I, I, I have this data, I want to know what is the statistics about this sales. So I just go here. You know, other, fun, other beauty about some types of tools is it also gives you the search and run function. So I can just search. I want a particular function. Starting somewhere. So I want something called statistics. So I choose column statistics. So it can give me so many details about a particular field. So I want to choose the field called sales. Give me all the numeric statistics about this field. So within few minutes, it is able to analyze and tell me, see there are so many number of average of positive records, this is a negative records, this is a range, this is a variance, etc. Correct? So, whenever you are auditing a larger population, this will give you an overview within few seconds and you are able to save a huge amount of time. Quickly moving on to a few more functions, you know these are types of statistics which it can generate. Uh, yes, identification of duplicates or we can also refer to this as gaps. Many a times when we do an audit, typically in the case of banking sector, we need to ensure the bills, invoices, checks are always on serial number basis. So what I do is I click this column called invoice number, which is my column C over here. I can do certain analytical procedures here. So I go here, click identify duplicates. I say identify what are the duplicates, which is normally known by using Excel uh, uh, methods. But what I can also do is, I can also identify, sorry, I can also identify what is called as the gaps. How much is the gap between each number? So I know that the number should always have a gap only of 1. Or I can always say, is there any gap more than 2 or 5? I can just define. I click OK. It is able to analyze and tell me which are the areas or which are the cells where there is a gap. Between 1035 to 1035 there is a gap. That is because 1036 may not have appeared. 158 there is a gap. Again here you see 2002 and 2003. That means those two numbers are missing. That's basically what we are able to infer. So in a quick instance, you are able to know where all the gaps are there and this is one more powerful function which you can use. Uh, probably I will try to spend some uh, you know unique things which I have used. Something called as same, same, different. Two fields are same, one field is different. Say for example, this I used it when we were doing an audit of e-commerce. The vendor had supplied the same product, the same vendor, supplied at different locations at different prices. You know, I want to analyze this. So all that I do is, I have let us say some procurement data. So I have this procurement data, I want to analyze the same vendor code, you know, the same material code, but is it at different prices. So I try to do identify duplicates, a concept called same, same, different. So I go click here, I want the fields which are same, vendor code and material code. What is the field I want for a difference? I say unit price and I try to execute this, let us see what the summary is or what the result. Look what happens here. There is a vendor who is 24 by 7 or 24 into 7 super couriers. Now this person, the same material code if you see here, he is delivered at Bangalore at a different unit price.
price, Chennai at a different unit price, Mumbai at a different unit price. Now when you want to do any bit of audit, especially large volumes of data, you can apply these sort of simple terms. Correct? So this is another powerful function. Moving on, you know, uh, I think in identify gaps, we also looked into outliers, I don't spend too much time. Stratified sampling, I think we spent some time. A few, you know, interesting areas. Fuzzy match. This is something which you can, you know, probably uh, draw a lot of benefits. Many a times when they do this fraud prone entries, or you know, when the same invoice is used multiple times, chain check number is used, what they do is they just give a space between the characters and they try to do it. When you are trying to compare duplicates, if the space is there, you will not be able to enter. And that is where this fuzzy match can probably try to help you. So let's quickly go to another file. Let us say I have this transaction sales, you know, file here. If you carefully look into this, I have check number 93 towards printer, check number 93 towards printer. So this is basically a same amount, 35,000, 38,000. Two times I have used this check for all you know, I might have used this check for something else. So I want to identify by using audit technique. So I have an option called fuzzy match. And other I use a function called arrange. I want the data to be arranged. How do I want the data to be arranged? Let the input value be the transaction description. That is nothing but what you see in column E. Then I say let the split value be space. Maybe they are separated by space. And then I say identify the duplicates and tell. So let us see what the result is. It has given me all the cases, look at this, purchase of HDD, purchase HDD of, correct, check number 93 towards printer, check number space 93, 93 towards check number, all permutation combination it is able to give me, probably if I investigate this, I will be able to solve problems much more quickly. So as I said, this data analytics is all about what sort of function. So like this, there are so many functions which I can keep on discussing for want of time because we have a few more minutes. You know, probably I thought I will just give the gist or what are the major things. Dynamic filter, again, uh, probably parallel analysis, whenever you have to do the 70-20 rule, 80-20 uh, rule, you know, you just try to apply, you might get some results like this. What is 80% of the population, 20% of the population. ABC analysis, just uh, trying to give a few things. This is something which, uh, you know, quadrant analysis, we use it again where, you know, the discrete date type of data, try to map the data into four quadrants in terms of quantity and price. Probably you can analyze what is the pattern. So these are a few things probably I thought I should mention over here because uh, for want of time I will cut it short here and quickly move on to the concluding part. So as an auditor, where can I use this? Where can I practically put these into action? The first thing I can use heavily is on audit of account payable. Account payable is majority of the situations where huge frauds occur. Either it could be vendor onboarding, either it could be payment, duplicate payments, multiple things happening, etc. All these things, you know, you can easily identify. What are the functions you can use in amount payable? I think we already spoken about, so I will not spend too much time. Privileged access. In fact, you know, probably I would just like to spend a minute to explain how you can use this tool. Let us say, in an organization when I am trying to do an audit, give me a minute, I will just shut these functions. Let us say I have the sales transaction and I also have the sales authorized limit. This is again one more powerful thing which you can use it. Now I want to know who are all the fellows who made sales in excess of the limit which have given them the permission or any person have exceeded the limit. So I go to a something called as analytical limit, sorry, authentication check. So I go to something called as authentication check. If I go to this authentication check, I can now compare multiple data. So I say the primary file is, sorry which is my sales file, I go to templates, analytical, authentication check, I have my primary file which is my sales file and I also have a secondary file which is nothing but my, if you can see here, sales authorization limit, correct? So I choose the sales authorization limit. 
and the moment I say this, I say please match both the user IDs. If both the user IDs are equal, please tell me how much of sales are greater than the limit. How much of the sales are greater than the limit and I just say okay, immediately it will run a the analytical engine and try to give me a report which says these are all the sales which they have exceeded the limit. Sales is 12 lakhs, whereas oh sorry 1.2 lakh, whereas the limit is 20,000. So this way, lot of checks are possible when we are using these sort of functions. Vulnerability management, general ledger review, travel expenses. One more heavy, you know, one more very important area where we were able to do it. I'll give you a practical place, especially in travel management, where we were able to bring in a lot of savings. There was a company which had huge amount of, you know, it was an IT company based out of uh, Whitefield. There was huge travels for their employee because, you know, pick up and drop it was a BPO facility and their travel bill for the entire year was close to about 25 to 26 crores. You know, that was the amount they had spent because they also had that many number of employees. Now, they wanted to see whether we are able to save some amount of, you know, money there. So, when we picked up, we used, you know, multiple tools, we figured out that all the majority of the times what happened, a Tata Sumo used to get occupied only by two people, whereas its capacity was at least four or five, other than the driver's seat of course, correct? Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, what, uh, the larger vehicle, uh, what we call that? Uh, traveler. Traveler or that uh, Swaraj Musta, which had a capacity of 12, used to always have only about three or four, or sometimes even five. Now we did a lot of analytics around this and we figured out that at least 60% of this they were incurring extra. Then we went and explained to the management, then they did not agree for many reasons. They said, no, if a woman employee is going, I need to provide some additional safety, extra, all of those. I discounted all of that. We were still able to identify at least 20 to 25 percent of the expenditure was waste. Imagine you had told the client that how much ever you depict as the wastage is the 1 percent of that will become your audit bill. Huge amount of potential opportunity. Unfortunately, I did not do that. People learn from mistakes. Correct? So these are a few audit areas which probably I thought you know is relevant in this forte. A few examples, what are you know various things you can do in accounts payable audit, a few functions. You can do ABC analysis, you can do some vendor payment analysis, uh, you can do some duplicate uh, uh, vendor bill payment, you know these are few checks which is possible. Audit in general ledger, again you can do some variation, high value round sum, splitting of vouchers, uh, voucher posted on weekends, you know those are a few cases. Auditing payroll, multiple payments to same employee, very important check, multiple payments to employees and checking ghost employees which happened in the case of Satyam, correct? So all those are a few areas which you could probably spend some time on and auditing of travel, again you can try to look into the location etc. One of the things which we figured out in one of the travel audit is, we found that one employee always claimed uh, flight expense, he did not claim the taxi fare from his home to the airport or return. We were always surprised, we thought that the employee used to, you know, this happened with 3-4 employees. We always thought that this employee was, you know, going by his own means etc. But why would he still not claim it? Then we realized most of his travel flight bills were fake bills or some fictitious bills because he used to never go to the flight, he used to just book it, he used to try to do some alternate method, he used to fall all, you know, he used to go by train and try to claim the flight fare. You know, many things like that we started, you know, issues were there. So with the help of analytical tools and engines, we were able to identify. So what is my key takeaway? Invest and experiment in technology. Typically, they think that adopt and adapt data analytics. Because analytics is the future. Build awareness, which could be within yourself, within your staff, within your client. Try to do at least one audit in a different manner, you will never know what the returns are. Train and develop the skill sets and the mindsets, that is very crucial. Dedicate your time, most important. It is not sufficient that we have heard this in this one and a half hour or a couple of hours. It is very crucial that you need to see how you can use this. And most important, change from the tick approach to the click approach. Right? That is where our future is. So to conclude, probably a small video. I draw the reference and I will give you why I am trying to give this video as a conclusion.
updated else you will soon become outdated okay. remember where there is a mouse there is a cat thank you so much bangalore branch for this opportunity if you have any questions i am more than happy to take it or you can write out to me or we have the in a break time we could always discuss thank you Big round of applause once again, ladies and gentlemen, for excellent presentation by ICI Nursing Home and Home. On behalf of Bangalore Bench, I thank you once again, sir, for spending your valuable time. I'd like to present this small mentor, I'll be serving you only to please come forward and have us please present her own mentor. Yeah, yeah. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's break the tea for 10 minutes and let's go back.